Why doesn't socialism work? I submit to you it doesn't work because it ignores economics 101. And this isn't a course on economics, obviously, but I, I'm just throwing some ideas up here. Most of you probably are very familiar with these ideas. Some of you may not have thought some of this. But we're just going to go through some reasons that socialism doesn't work and what does work in economics. What is the, the absolute necessity to have good economics? Number one, you have to have private property, right? If you don't have private property, how can you engage in any kind of commerce? You got to be able to sell something or buy something. It, it implies you've got private property. Now, the Bible presupposes private property. How? Think of the commandments. Thou shalt not steal. Secondly, and this is where so many countries fall down, you have to have the rule of law. If you don't have the rule of law, you're not going to have security in the marketplace and there's going to be harms done. Also, free enterprise. And that increases value. A little bit later, we're going to talk about how the pie is not static this is one of the myths that people think there's only so much wealth out there and you can't grow wealth you know if, if i win you have to lose that's not the way it works but that's what people think but you can increase value how about number four you also need competition because it motivates innovation and it also brings forth quality number five and this is a big myth that people think capitalism is motivated by greed no it's motivated by self-interest. And it also provides you the ability to serve and benefit yourself at the same time. Number six, here's what Dave is just saying, the invisible hand. There's a, there's a free market invisible hand. And here's how he put it in The Wealth of Nations. He said, every individual intends only his own security and he is in this, as in many other cases, led by an invisible hand to promote an end which was not part of his intention. The guy mining graphite in Sri Lanka probably doesn't even know it's going for pencils, right? Or the guy making the equipment to mine graphite doesn't even know that it's going to mine graphite. He says, by pursuing his own interests, he frequently promotes that of the society more effectively than when he really intends to promote it. I've never known much good done by those who affected to trade for the public good. In other words, when people are really trying to help the public, he says, I haven't really seen that happen. But if they just go about their common tasks every day, operating in their own self-interest, somehow it helps everybody. This is why socialism can't work because there's nobody that has the knowledge or the time or the ability to say, okay, you guys work on this, you guys work on that, you guys work on this, you guys work on that, you guys work on this, we're all gonna bring it together and we're all gonna make an iPhone. Nope, it'll never happen. Ha, the free rider problem. They can benefit from a system without contributing. This is because we have a sinful nature. Number eight, just got a few more of these. The ripple effect. The ripple effect. Why is that important to economics? Because I see so many people ignoring it. Like for example, tax rates. If you lower tax rates, what happens to tax revenue? It goes up. Not always, because there's a limit. Obviously you can't cut it to zero, right? Okay, because then you'd have no revenue. But history shows that if you lower tax rates, and more people in the private sector can then keep their money, what do they wind up doing with it? They wind up spending and investing it, which creates economic activity, which actually sends more money to the government. Again, there's a limit to this. You can't cut it to zero. Supply and demand, this can't be dictated. I mean, that's kind of essential thing when it comes to economics, as you know. You can't dictate supply and demand. Okay, Dave, today you're going you're gonna to buy a thousand shirts and Ross, you're going to sell a thousand shirts. What if, what if Dave and Ross don't want to do that? The government jumps in and tries to set what the production rate's going to be. It can't do it. It doesn't have the knowledge as we talked about earlier. The invisible hand does it. Now, this, this is a key word when it comes to economics and it's known as scarcity. Scarcity really drives what people are paid. 
People always say, well, why do we pay our quarterbacks more than our teachers? A teacher makes, what, 50 grand a year? This guy makes 50 grand in the first minute of the game, of one game. Why? Scarcity, along with demand. Supply and demand. Right. So like 26 professional Yeah, yes. Yeah, how many people can do this? Very, very few. And yet people want to see it. That's why his salary is so high, right? We do need teachers, but a lot of people can teach. So socialism doesn't work because it ignores economics 101.